This episode is brought to you by Vital Farms. Isn't it bullshit to have to question where your food comes from? At Vital Farms, you can trace your pasture-raised eggs all the way back to the source, the pasture. On the side of each pasture-raised carton of eggs, you'll find the name of the farm where your eggs were laid. And when you look the farm up on their website, you'll get a peek at all the sunshine, fresh air, and open space the hens enjoy. Learn more and find out where to buy them at vitalfarms.com. Vital Farms, keeping it bullshit free. Between the kids being home and hosting, everything in our house gets used up in summer. With Instacart, I can save money by stocking up on all my favorite summer brands. I save time by getting everything delivered in as fast as an hour. And I save myself a sink full of dirty dishes by stocking up on paper plates for the annual summer cookout. Save more on summer essentials? Spend more time enjoying summer. Add summer to cart. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Darren Janelle about developing amazing teams with a dynamic culture. Darren Janelle, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. John, thanks for having me. I'm fired up to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. We've been prepping for this for a long time, and today we finally have the chance to sit down together and have a nice conversation around amazing teams and developing a really dynamic culture within your organization and within those teams. Uh, You're joining us from upstate New York. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. As we get started, I wanted to share Darren's bio with everybody. Darren Janelle is the founder and CEO of Janelle Group, a 150-person software consulting company headquartered in Schenectady, New York. Darren leads with energy and is maniacally focused on creating an amazing work environment for his team. He earned an undergraduate degree in business administration from the University at Albany and a master's degree in information systems from NYU Stern School of Business. Uh, And I could go on and on, Darren, but I think I'll pause there. Uh, You've done a lot. Anything you would like to highlight or call attention to from your background, your personal context before we dive on into the conversation? Sure. So yeah, I think, you know, the the, the biggest uh, context is what do I do now, right? I, I run a software development company. So, uh, you know, we have about 150 people on our team, and we develop custom software for businesses. So so companies come to us when they can't find a product off the shelf that meets their needs, they'll come to us and we'll build it for them custom. Sometimes we'll do the entire project ourselves. And sometimes we'll supplement an already existing software development team, right? I'm, I'm a co-founder of this company with my brother, Jason. Uh, my brother, Jay, and I grew up here in upstate New York, grew up playing sports, basketball in particular. Um, and that really shaped a lot of, you know, our beliefs and in, in the type of company we wanted to build, right? We wanted to, to build that special team um, atmosphere. And, and we're serial entrepreneurs. We got some really bad failures under our belt. Uh, but we're doing something really cool right now, and, and I'm just excited to be here and, and share any stories that, uh, you know, in order to add value to your audience. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. And yeah, we've we've all been there. We've all had the setbacks, right? And it's the old cliche. It's not how many times you fall down, but it's how many times you get back up. Uh it's cliche, but it's true. And, you know, it, it's it's just a matter about a matter of learning from uh, these experiences. And hopefully we hone our abilities and skills and capabilities as we go. And it sounds like you're doing some really cool stuff uh, there at Janelle Group. 
Uh, so kudos to, for, to you for that. Now, as we get started, to t- you know, we're going to talk about developing amazing teams with a dynamic culture. Maybe you can share a little bit about what you've done to develop those types of teams within your own organization uh, and with within client organizations. Yeah, sure. So, so again, my, I mentioned my brother and I grew up, you know, playing sports, and we were lucky enough to be a part of a few special teams, sports teams, growing up. And you know, to to me, that's that's when people are at their best and when they're the happiest when they're a part of a special team. And it doesn't have to be a sports team, right? It could be a, a fraternity, a band, um, a startup company, right? When you're a part of a special team, a special group, um, you know, I think that's when people are their happiest. I know that's that's where I feel. Uh, at home and I feel I feel the most fulfilled in life um, and, you know and there and there were so many times in life where maybe I wasn't a part of a special team and it just it didn't feel right it took me a while to figure out the differences between being a, a, on a special team and not um, and I and I think a lot of people can't maybe they can't uh, verbalize it but they know when it, when it is that special thing and when it is not so when we when we set out to build Janelle group we wanted to recreate that thing that we experienced from our sports career, right? And, and so I think, John, the, the number one thing that it boils down to for us is adding the right type of people to the team, right? Companies talk about core values and all of this, but at the end of the day, it boils down to, I want to be around people that are, that are happy, that are, you know, that, that are excited about life, that, are, that, that want to have fun, right? I don't want to be around people that are difficult to be around. And you can boil all the core values talk down to, to, you know, we could talk for ages about that stuff. But at the end of the day, I want to be around people that are easy to be around. And, and the thing I often talk about, John, is, right, think about if you went on a, on a trip, right? And you went on a trip with some of, like, the most annoying, uh, you know, draining people that you know. No matter how great the trip and the accommodations and the five-star hotel was, that trip's not going to be fun because you're around people that are sucking the life out of you. As opposed to if you went on the worst trip ever you know your your flight was canceled the hotel sucked everything was awful but you went with the most fun people that you know you're going to have an epic time and there's going to be stories that you're going to be telling about that that trip for for ages to come right and and so i think that's the number one thing that we focus on john is i want to be around and i want to work with people that are fun to be around easy to be around and and people that that i'm happy to see every day does that make sense yeah, and having kind of shared core values is essential to that. And it doesn't mean you need to surround yourself with people uh, who are just like you. I, I know that's some people might be listening and saying, well, wait a minute. But if if I just, you know, associate with people who I'm really comfortable around and really uh, have fun to be around, you know, maybe I'm not challenging my thinking. Maybe I'm I'm not having the type of team that will push us to be better uh, and and achieve at our top levels, et cetera, right? And so I think it, it's a matter of balancing, you know, these different components. Absolutely, we want to have uh, a team where everyone can show up to work, bring their whole true authentic self to the work that they do, be a part of a team, feel safe to 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 contribute in meaningful ways, and that there's this foundation of shared values. So we we don't have to be the same. We don't have to be identical in any sense of the you know of of the term. Um, but we what we do need is to have you know a common shared vision and set of values around what we're trying to accomplish, and that we're committed to work together to do it. Uh, and and recognizing that yeah, sometimes we're going to disagree. Sometimes we're going to really push back on each other hard. Um, you know those types of things actually can often push us to to do the most creative and innovative things w- within a team dynamic. Uh, and I, I can't help but relate it to a show I, I just started watching with my wife. There's this new Amazon Prime show called Daisy Jones and the Six. I don't know if you've seen it uh, or seen previews for it. It's this fictional mockumentary um, series about this rock band uh, loosely based, I think, on Stevie Nicks and and Fleetwood Mac and and such. Anyways, it's that kind of a dynamic though. And you have these two lead singers uh, who who just like push each other's buttons constantly, <laughs> like and they kind of hate each other, but they also kind of love each other, and they just push each other, push each other, and and they just create amazing music. Uh, and and you know, I don't I don't want to be in a workplace environment where we're like at each other's throats to pu- push each other towards great achievement. Uh, but there's something about the tension uh, in an effective team that can also lead to really great things too. Any thoughts about that? Well, 
Well, yeah, it's funny you bring that up, right? Because when I think back to my sports career, I, I very much bought into that really hard nose. Uh, challenge your teammate type of mentality, right? I grew up on Michael Jordan and Larry Bird. These guys were tough guys. Some people would just say, you know, some people would say, many people would say, Michael Jordan is a prick, right? He's not a good guy, right? And so I think in a, in a sports environment or maybe a tougher environment, maybe like the military or something like that, that type of mentality and attitude can bring out amazing things. It can bring out the best in people, but it's tough. It's tough to be around that. It's it's um, it's not necessarily the way I want to live my life, right? So so John, we've actually changed a little bit on that. Back in the sports our sports days, my brother and I were very tough and hard nosed, and I mean, I could even think about like fights in practice with our teammates. Um, but it was still that special team. In the workplace, though, now that I have to do this for the next 40 years of my life, I couldn't keep that level of intensity up for 40 years, not to mention people would probably quit here and it just wouldn't work, right? You think about like, you hear about Steve Jobs maniacally driving his team and many people hated him, but he got greatness out of them. You know, I think, so that's like one school of thought and one way of doing it. And I think that makes sense when you're trying to change the world the way Apple did, when you're trying to win a championship, when you're trying to train Navy SEALs, Right. But when you're trying to run a company like us and we're trying to create an environment where people can create an amazing life for the long run, we got to really be careful about how how tough we go, right? And we, we've we've kind of changed our thinking on that. Does, does, does that resonate with you? Yeah, I think it's a balance. Um, and I think as long as we don't, you know, I, I was talking with an executive not too long ago, a couple of years ago, maybe. And he was sharing with me his philosophy on hiring and and how he knows when he's made the right decision. Uh, and his kind of bottom line foundational, you know, litmus test was who would I love to go camping with for the weekend? Uh, and, and he said, if, if I could see myself going camping with them for the weekend, uh, then I know they'd be a good person to work with and a good fit for the team. Now, I, I get where he's coming from as he was saying that, uh, but also red flags start going off in my head. I'm From a diversity, equity, and inclusion standpoint, I'm like, ooh, that is trouble uh, because if, if that's your litmus test, then all you're doing is surrounding yourself with people who are like you, who act like you, talk like you, look like you, have the same similar personalities to you, and that isn't a good thing. That That is going to drive down um, the, the effectiveness of any team, uh, whether it's a high stakes kind of team, like you were just describing, or kind of a more just run of the mill everyday work team. Um, and so th there has to be a balance. There has to be some sensitivity, uh, to making sure that we are not just replicating ourselves in our team so that we have diversity, uh, cognitive diversity. We have other types of forms of inclusion, um, that can then lead to good outcomes, uh, but I agree. It, you don't always have to have um, this like hard charging kind of team atmosphere. Some people function really well in that atmosphere. Some people do not function well in that atmosphere. I'm one that would actually not function very well in that kind of an atmosphere. I'd rather, much rather work with a team uh, of of people who I know I care about them. They care about me. They don't need to be like me. I don't need to be like them. There's no like thought policing. We're not like having all these, these, uh, different litmus tests around ideologies and that kind of stuff, but we're, we're there committed to do the work. We know we are, we're trying to help each other be the best we can to achieve good, cool things. That's the kind of team I want to work on, uh, and be a part of. And, uh, I, I guess that's, it's not a mutually exclusive thing, is it? Like it can be somewhere it's on the spectrum of how the dynamics might play out. Sure, sure. Let me let me try to tweak that camping uh, analogy uh, a little bit, right? If you say I, I, that my litmus test is would I enjoy going camping with them, to me that lends a little bit more to you know getting people that are all the same, right? We want to hang out by the fire, we want to drink beers and tell stories and whatever, right? I'm going to get people that are very similar to me. If I tweak that a little bit, you know that silly show, The Amazing Race. I don't know if you know that television show. Mm -hmm. How would I feel if this person was assigned to me as my teammate in the amazing race? Now we're talking about something different, right? Because this isn't going camping and sitting around and talking. I want to talk sports and basketball. I want to find 
other basketball players. And those are the type of people I want to camp with, right? That's not leading to diversity. But on the amazing race, I'm I'm going to appreciate somebody who's from a different country, somebody who's maybe nerdier than I am, somebody who's got different different skills, right? And and we're going to enjoy each other's company and we're going to get along. We're not going to kill each other. We might argue and we might, we might you know, it's a very uh, intense thing. I never even really watched the show, The Amazing Race, but I was trying to think of like a way to um, illustrate, well, no, I'm happy that this person is on my team because I think we're going to get along. I think we're going right. to work well together and I think they're going to add value. That might be a better lens than looking through, hey, who do I want to go to the bar and drink beers with, right? That's a very, those are two different yeah. uh, things. I don't well, know. What do you think? No, no, absolutely. And and the reality is like there's a whole industry around executive retreats and team building and and those sorts of things. And a lot of times there are components of you know being out in nature or ropes courses or you know those sorts of things like there there's nothing wrong with the outdoors component of what that executive was talking to me about it was just like what you were just describing um that was a little bit you know potentially problematic um but yeah absolutely i like the amazing race kind of analogy because yeah you sometimes you got to get people out of their comfort zone a little bit put them in in uh in close proximity to people that are maybe different than them and push them to shift their thinking a little bit. And um, that's really healthy, uh, but it can be done in a way that's empowering and inviting and positive, right? It doesn't need to be a negative thing, um, yeah. which I think is what I hear you saying as well. And and that's great. I, I think that's fantastic. I, I've been a part of those retreats as a participant. I've been a part of those retreats as the person putting them on. Uh, and they can be really, really powerful uh, opportunities for people. Oftentimes, the, the whole point is to help people from very diverse backgrounds see, hey, we can actually, even though we don't seem to see eye to eye on many things, we can actually get to the root of what we do agree on and and come together and actually do some really cool stuff together. Uh, and that's really awesome when you see that within teams that come in kind of dysfunctional. And then over time, over a week, you know, an intensive weekend of of these interactions or or whatever the format uh, you see them bonding and getting to know each other and learning to appreciate each other, even though they may have vastly different, you know, political, social, economic, uh, religious, whatever kind of beliefs or, uh, you know, way of viewing the world uh, that has maybe caused some friction in the past. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I, I agree. And we we go out of our way to try to create these types of situations where somebody's true colors will start to shine through, right? You know, when, and that's when you're, you know, maybe you're out of the office, maybe you're at a restaurant, how do they treat a waitress? How do they do, you know, we just got done with our, uh, we have this big week long celebration of our culture, we just got done with it uh, last week. And, you know, how does somebody do when they don't have a lot of sleep, right? How about if they have a couple drinks in them? How about if they're under pressure, right? And, and you're starting to see people in different situations. And I think that's where their true colors really shine through. And you start to say, wow, I, I'm really connected to this person because we've been in all of these different situations. And no matter what, we always find a way to, to, to figure it out, to work well together. And, and I really enjoy you know, being around them. Doesn't mean we're not going to argue, maybe. We, we might go at it. We might be competing. We might be disagreeing. But at the end of that, there's no bad blood. There's, you know, we realize that we're working together for the the, the same common goal. And I think when you put people in that, those situations, yeah. that's when you can really figure out. Yeah, fantastic. And so and that really gets into kind of the second half of what we we're going to discuss today is you have these these great teams, people that you you genuinely uh, want to be with and work with. So you're not you don't have the Sunday blues and you're actually getting excited to go back to work on Monday to be working with this team uh to do some cool stuff uh that's that's fantastic when if you've been lucky enough to be a part of a team like that uh you you know what we're talking about like it's it's really great unfortunately many of us probably most of us have also been a part of teams that weren't like that <laughs> they were the exact opposite it was like soul sucking 
<laughs> and draining and just so hard. And, and even if you love your work, even if you love the organization overall, your immediate team creates so much of the dynamic around which you experience the workplace um, and your immediate boss, like all of that plays such a huge role that we, we really have to foster a really dynamic, healthy, safe, uh, innovative culture for teams to be able to thrive. What are some of the things that you've done um, to help foster that within highly effective teams, uh, especially if you have any examples of like where a team was not functioning particularly well, maybe there's the friction, the tensions, um, but you were able to help them turn it around. Sure. You know, one, one of our core beliefs here, John, is people make deeper connections when they do something extraordinary together. So I actually mean the extraordinary, outside of the ordinary things that they do in a life. Think, think about some of the people you got closest with the quickest, right? A lot of times it's when you did something extraordinary together. Maybe you went on a trip to China together, right? You didn't really know them. Two weeks later, you come back, you feel bonded to this person because you both experienced this thing that you're not used to and you did it together and it fast forwards the relationship. Sometimes it's it's shared suffering, right? I think back to my sports moments, double session practices, running until you vomit. And, you know, that's not fun. But at the end of that, you feel bonded with this other person, right? So we're going out of our way, John, to, to, to create these type of situations. And, and we're being intentional, intentional about trying to create the environment where these um, types of extraordinary experiences can happen. You know, sometimes it's events we throw. Sometimes it's, um, you know, trips we're taking. Just last week at our culture event, right? We've, we've, been, we've been hyping up this, uh, this beer pong tournament, right? And we've been having qualifiers for, for a year. And so for the finals, we literally brought, brought in bleachers and we set up an, an arena for the finals and there was $10,000 on the line. And there was a moment, John, where one of the kids... He had to hit the final shot. He hit the final shot and he got absolutely mobbed. We have crazy video of this. We're going to be releasing a highlight video of this. And it was one of the coolest moments of his life. Hell, it was one of the coolest moments of my life. And I was just watching, you know? And, and so now you're, we're, we're, we've, we've gone out of our way to try to create an environment where this special thing could happen. And then it happens and you're watching it unfold. And this is a moment that they'll never forget ever, right? Have you ever done anything, shot anything for $10,000? I've never done that in my entire life, right? And I played sports at a high level and I've never been that much pressure on me in one moment. And this kid came through in that situation and the crowd mobbed him and he's never <laughs> going to forget that. And anyone that was there is never going to forget that, right? And so so we're, we're trying to be intentional about uh, creating those types of, of moments. And I have more anecdotes if you want more silly ones but uh you know we, we i think we do a really good job of that yeah well that's so fun uh I, I i was just in vegas over the weekend with my wife we were attending the um the WAC tournament so the the march madness uh, uh yeah conference I tournament heard, uh, yeah yeah leading yeah. into the ncaa my university was you know won the regular season championship uh, you know, high, high levels of anticipation going into this tournament to go on to the NCAA tournament. Um, and, you know, they were, they were in the semifinals, they were uh, up by 21 points. And the other team just started chipping away and coming back. And it was like this most improbable comeback. Um, and then, you know, they're, they're down by three with like five seconds left. The other team goes down, shoots a three, makes it and gets fouled, ends up making the free throw and winning. <laughs> and, you know, it was, it was soul crushing for us. Like that yeah. was a hard way to lose, but yeah. man was, it was so fun to watch the other team. <laughs> and yeah. I mean, you can just imagine the excitement level, um, you know, it was hard for us, but it was wonderful for them. And it was just, I, I couldn't help, but just like uh, feel, you know, just feel a lot of pride for them, even though it wasn't my team <laughs> uh, because yeah. of, of what they'd accomplished. And, and that's kind of what you're describing. And we can create small wins like that for our teams. It doesn't have to be a big, huge grand winning the tournament thing. It can be, it can be all sorts of things where we just can highlight each other and what we're doing and accomplishing and, and, and cheer each other on. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a brutal moment for you. Or did you go to Sam Houston? Is that where you went or where? Uh, Utah Valley is where I'm oh, a professor. Utah Valley. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yep. Um, yep. Oh, that's brutal when you lose a game like that, you know, <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun. Well, Darren, uh, this has been a pleasure. I know at the time I need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up for today, I just want to give you a chance to share with the audience, how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, uh, and then give us a final 
word on the topic for today. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, if you want to connect with me, I have a, a personal website, darrenjanel.com, D-A-R-R-I-N-J-A-H-M-E-L.com. And uh, and then also our, our company website is janellegroup.com, J-A-H-N-E-L group.com. If you need custom software or you just want to connect with me, talk about culture, anything that, you know, I can do to help, um, you know, we're just trying to serve every day. My final word on the topic, John, would be if you're looking to build a special team, it all starts with the right people. So don't be one of those people who just sits back and says, oh, I can't hire good people. It's so hard. Nobody wants to work and just whine about it. It is up to you to find the best people. Speak to more people, connect with more folks, interview more people. It is a numbers game. If you speak to 200 people, I guarantee you will find a star. So don't compromise when it comes time to build your team. Speak to more folks. It's all about your recruiting funnel and you will build something special. Yeah. And people want to work for great teams uh, as the bottom line. So <laughs> it is possible. Thank you, Darren. It's a, been a pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Darren can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.